Welcome, let's take a look at microlearning videos, a quantitative study design. Microlearning videos deliver lessons in small steps that are more easily understandable and readily accessible. Learners can replay and pause the videos over and over as needed. In my organization, we are moving toward using more microlearning videos designed to train and provide performance support at the point of need. These short lessons can efficiently and cost effectively provide refresher training on a particular skill, walk a new employee through procedural steps, or provide case study examples to illustrate concepts or lead into discussions. Microlearning videos are the ideal way in which to deliver small bites of content to our learners. In this quantitative study design on microlearning videos, Two research questions will be explored. Question 1. What is the influence of applying the signaling design principle in microlearning videos on learning outcomes? And question 2. To what extent does applying one type of signaling in microlearning videos influence learning outcomes compared to applying multiple types of signaling in microlearning videos? As this is an experimental study design, the participants will be randomly selected from all the students enrolled in courses during the time of the study. These participants will be selected using simple random sampling to represent the target population of acquisition students. Students enrolled in courses during the study time frame will each be assigned a number. 90 numbers will then be randomly selected from a table of random numbers. These 90 students will be asked to participate in the study. All participation will be anonymous. Each of the 90 selected participants will be randomly assigned to one of three conditions or groups. Each of these 90 students will be assigned a new number. 30 numbers will then be randomly selected from a table of random numbers. These 30 participants will be group 1. The next 30 numbers randomly selected from a table of random numbers will comprise group 2. The remaining 30 numbers will comprise group 3. By following these procedures, we will ensure the sampling and assignment are randomly selected and best representative of the target population. Being an experimental study design, we seek to examine if differences exist between groups. To do this, a pre-test, post-test control group design will be implemented to determine differences among the three conditions or groups. This design will help us examine the differences between the groups before and after viewing the microlearning videos. This will help to account for participant-related variables of prior knowledge and experience level, as well as showing changes in knowledge. Using the pre-test, post-test control group design requires multiple groups and thorough planning and enables better control over confounds. In our study design, the same basic material or content will be presented in all conditions. Only the type of signaling will vary among the three groups. All groups will be given a pre-test the day prior to viewing their microlearning videos and a post-test the day after viewing their videos. Both tests will be accessible online and questions will be randomized throughout the measurement. Here are some sample multiple choice questions. There are two examples of pre-test demographic questions that will be asked of the students. There's also an example of a pre-test content knowledge question. Additionally, a post-test demographic question will be asked as well as content knowledge questions. This study will be conducted as a two-month study employing quantitative methods. Pre- and post-testing results from three studied conditions will be measured. The research study will follow these procedures. Participants will be asked to join the study. Participants will be assigned to a group. Pre-tests will be given Monday through Wednesday only as they must be given the day prior to video viewing. Microlearning videos will be viewed Tuesday through Thursday only. Post-tests will be given Wednesday through Friday only, as they must be taken the day after the video. The test data will be reviewed and analyzed. Findings will be presented and interpreted. And to increase the authenticity and accuracy of the study's findings, colleagues or peers will review the process, findings as they develop, 
and interpretations. Signaling directs the learner's attention to what is really important. It guides learners to or through key elements. The same basic material or content will be presented in all conditions. Only the type of signaling will vary among the groups. In this experimental study design, the participants are assigned to one of three groups. No signaling, applying a single type of signaling, or applying multiple types of signaling. Let's look at an example of some screen captures. On the screen right now would be no signaling. That second group would be represented by a single type of signaling, such as this screen capture, where the line with Roland Wacker is highlighted, and it draws the learner's attention. The third group would be represented by applying multiple types of signaling, where not only do we highlight Roland Wacker, we circle him. Then we circle the phone number, because that's what information we're interested in. And then we also enlarge that data. So that's an example of the application of the three types of signaling as used in this study. Let's discuss reliability and validity for a moment. The multiple choice pretest and post-test will help ensure internal consistency, reliability. Content validity is determined through an expert. Construct validity is determined through factor analysis. To increase the internal validity of the study, confounding variables need to be minimized and instrumentation balance. To increase the external validity of the study, appropriate sampling assignment techniques will be used, and researchers need to remain aware that pretest sensitization may be an external threat to validity. Data will be gathered through the pretest and post-test to determine differences between the three conditions of applying single type signaling, multiple type signaling, and no signaling. The testing instruments are intended to gather data regarding specific demographics and contract pricing content knowledge. Demographic data will be compiled and reported to provide a summary of the sample population represented. As more than two groups will be measured and compared, a one-way analysis of variance, or ANOVA, will be used to analyze the data. An ANOVA compares the means between the groups and determines whether any of those means are statistically significantly different from each other. Specifically, in regard to prior knowledge, an ANOVA will be performed on the pretest contract pricing knowledge questions to determine whether differences exist between the three groups after the participant selection and assignment is randomized. Also, ANOVA calculations will help assess whether there is significance among the three conditions of applying single type signaling, multiple type signaling, or no signaling. The purpose of this study is to collect data regarding the most effective way to apply the signaling design principle when developing microlearning videos. The results and subsequent insights gained may assist curriculum designers when making design choices for future micro lessons. These are the references used for this lesson. Thank you for joining me today.